Hello, friends, and welcome to worship together on this Easter Sunday. Yes, we are a year into a global pandemic, but this is a Sunday for joy and celebration. We miss your presence in this space, but we know that we are gathered here together, that we get to celebrate today victory over death, that love has conquered all. So today, we declare that Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. 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 pray. Dear gracious God, creator, redeemer, and friend, we come to you today with gratitude, new hope, and the celebration of this Easter season on our minds and hearts. We remember those who are suffering, never free to rest. Bless them with renewed strength, calm their fears, bringing healing and rest to their bodies. We have sensed your presence during these recent months of adversity and strife. In our times of darkness, you have heard our prayers for peace and comfort. In the season of Easter, hear now our prayers of thanksgiving as we celebrate new beginnings. You have answered our prayers, giving us vision and direction, which has sustained us. Today, help us live the gladness and grace of Easter Sunday every day. In this sacred time of renewed trust and commitment, may we remember the true meaning of Easter. Give us grateful hearts for your sacrificial love and for the joy of saying, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. The Old Testament reading today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will move his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. 
is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Today's Gospel reading comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter, following him, went in into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand that this, what the scriptures had said, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting there with the body, where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not Hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us if you find us weeping, for these have been difficult days. We have gone without so much. We have been outside so many of our normal rhythms. We've not been able to enjoy time with family and friends. We've not been able to enjoy all the usual customs and practices and traditions of our day to day, our week to week, our month to month, and even year to year. Forgive us, O Lord, if you find us weeping, for we have lost so many. 
we have lost family and friends, for keep people we hold dear. And, it, and the grief has been, has been very difficult for us. Forgive us if you find us weeping and grieving. But, O oh Lord, we pray that you would open our eyes, that we may see you, the resurrected one, the Christ who has shown through death and resurrection that you have power over death, that death does not have the sting that it once had, that though we may grieve those that we have lost, the traditions that we've lost, the experiences that we've lost, the time that we've lost, though we may grieve, we do not grieve as those without hope. For when we see you raised and lifted up, we have a new hope that we can join in in this resurrection, this new life, that we can celebrate life eternal. And it is in you, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Good morning. I wanted to share some pictures with you to help us remember what happened this last week. It was Holy Week, a week that we remember Jesus. Last Sunday was Palm Sunday. It's a day that we remember when Jesus rode into Jerusalem and everyone is celebrating Passover. They grabbed the palm branches and started to wave them as Jesus rode by on a donkey. So we waved homemade palm branches and said Hosanna to remember Jesus. Thursday was a day we call Monday Thursday. It's a day when we remember that Jesus met with his disciples in the upper room. On that night, he washed the disciples' feet. He had communion with them. He took the bread and he gave thanks to God for it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Eat this as a way of remembering me. And he took the cup and said, This is the cup of God's new covenant for you. Drink this as a way of remembering me. Friday was a sad day. It's called Good Friday, but it's the day that Jesus died. After Jesus died, a man named Joseph from Arimathea took the body of Jesus, wrapped it in cloth, and laid it in a tomb, a place where people were buried. He rolled a large stone in front of the tomb so that no one else would be buried there. And now it's Sunday. Today is a glorious day we call Easter. It's a day that we remember that very early in the morning, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb where Jesus was buried. When she got there, she saw that the stone had been rolled away and that Jesus wasn't there. She ran to tell the other disciples and they came to the tomb. They didn't understand what had happened. Mary was very sad and was weeping. Two angels appeared to her and asked why she was weeping. She told them somebody had taken away Jesus. When she said this, a man appeared to her. She thought he might be the gardener when he said her name. She knew he was Jesus. Mary knew that God had raised Jesus to life. And so today we celebrate that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. 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 Let's say a prayer. Dear God, Thank you that Christ is risen. Alleluia and Amen.
Please join us in a responsive reading from Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Good morning. Sam and Frodo find themselves in a dark cave, abandoned by their God, left by their guide, left in utter darkness. Presently groping and fumbling in the dark, they found that the opening on the left was blocked. Either it was a blind or else some great stone had fallen in the passage. This can't be the way, Frodo whispered. Right or wrong, we must take the other. And quick, Sam panted. There's something worse than Gollum about. I can feel something looking at us. They had not gone more than a few yards when from behind them came a sound, startling and horrible. A gurgling, bubbling noise and a long, venomous hiss. They wheeled round, but nothing could be seen. Still as stones they stood, staring, waiting for they did not know what. It's a trap, said Sam, and he laid his hand upon the hilt of his sword. And as he did, so he thought of the darkness of the barrow whence it came. I wish old Tom was near us now, he thought. Then as he stood, darkness about him and a blackness of despair and anger in his heart, it seemed to him that he saw a light in his mind, almost unbearably bright at first, far off. He saw the Lady Galadriel in Lorien. And gifts were in her hands. And you, ring bearer, he heard her say, remote but clear, for you I have prepared this. The bubbling hiss drew nearer, and there was a creaking as some of the great jointed thing that moved with slow purpose in the dark. A reek came on before it. Master, master, cried Sam, and the life and urgency came back into his voice. The lady's gift, the star glass, a light to you in dark places, she said it was to be, the star glass. The star glass, muttered Frodo, as one answering out of a sleep. <gasps> why, yes, why, had I forgotten it? A light when all other lights go out, and now indeed, light alone can help us. Slowly, he held aloft the file of Galadriel. For a moment it glimmered, faint as a rising star struggling in heavy earthward mists. And then, as its power waxed and hope grew in Frodo's mind, it began to burn and kindled to a silver flame, as though Arendil had himself come down from the high sunset pass with the last Cimmeril upon his brow. The darkness receded. The two were saved for the moment, but later in their adventure, things grew even darker still in Frodo's heart. And he said, I can't do this, Sam. Sam said, I know, it's all wrong. By rights, we shouldn't even be here, but we are. It's like in the great stories, Mr. Frodo, the ones that really mattered. Full of darkness and danger they were, and sometimes you didn't want to know the end, because how could the end be happy? How could the world go back the way it was when so much bad happened? But in the end, it's only a passing thing, this, this shadow. Even darkness must pass. A new day will come, and when the sun shines, it will shine out the clearer. Those were the stories that stayed with you. That meant something, even if you were too small to understand why. But I think, Mr. Frodo, I think I do understand. I know now. Folk in those stories had lots of chances of turning back, only they didn't, because they were holding on to something. What are we holding on to, Sam? That there's some good in this world, Mr. Frodo, and it's worth fighting for. Mary Magdalene knew this truth as well. For while it was still dark, she went to the tomb. Why? Why go to the place of pain? Mary must know what persons in grief have known for ages, and that is that grief cannot be avoided. There is no circumventing grief. The only way to learn to live with it is to get into it. 
for one does not get over grief. We just learn to live with loss. But it's not like something we can check off of a to-do list and then be done with it. Our, our losses are a part of who we are, especially when we're grieving the death of our loved ones. Mary, while it was still dark, goes to visit the tomb. Sam said, full of darkness and danger they were, and sometimes you didn't want to know the end. Because how could the end be happy? How could this end be happy? There's no conceivable way for her story to end happily. Jesus is dead. Not only that, he was crucified after he'd been beaten and spit upon. After he'd been flogged within an inch of his life, after he was arrested and condemned by both the religious and the political leaders of the day. And this didn't happen in a vacuum. It happened in front of everyone. They all knew, know this rabble-rousing rabbi from Nazareth lost the fight. Actually, they all know there wasn't even a fight. He just went quietly to his death. Full of darkness and danger, this story is. And we know about darkness, don't we? While it was still dark on that fateful morning, it is still dark here, too. Literally, I'm preaching in an empty sanctuary that is mostly dark, because we're not quite to the point where we can safely gather together in a confined space and worship. We've lost over half a million Americans to COVID-19 and over 2.8 million sisters and brothers around the world. And it isn't over yet. This feels like a story, the ending of which we don't want to know because how could it possibly be a happy ending? And though the families of the deceased bear the heaviest burden, this virus has affected everyone. We've all been locked down and siloed away from our families and friends. Many have lost their jobs or had reductions in salaries and responsibilities. Businesses have closed, some for good because they could not weather this storm. Children have had a major disruption in their education and teachers have been working double schedules to try to teach on at least two different platforms and in person when the jobs they had were already more than full time. It is still dark. Not only that, but we recently lived through a winter apocalypse where many lost electricity to their homes and that then affected their water supplies. Plumbers are still taking new appointments at least three weeks out because the demand is still so high for repair. Construction supplies are growing exponentially more expensive as supply lines are disruptive from sailing skyscrapers being blown to block the Suez Canal and COVID protocols and on and on it goes. It is still dark. The word John's gospel uses to describe the condition of the day, dark, also carries with it a spiritual connotation. The word also means that which blocks the light of God. On this faithful morning, it is still dark in the spiritual sense. Like we say of the dark night of the soul, their spiritual leader, the one who not only explained the scriptures to them and taught them in parables and healed the sick and made the wind and the waves silent and still, their spiritual leader had just been executed by the state in the most public and humiliating way possible. Crucifixion. Everyone knew that a person crucified was also cursed by God. Jesus said he must be lifted up, but this couldn't possibly be what he meant. And friends, our spirits are in many ways still dark, where the light of God seems blocked or prevented from us. We've lost loved ones and not been able to celebrate their lives and worship together. We've had weddings put on hold 
And while our virtual worship is better than nothing, it's a far cry from the experience we share when we're gathered together in this room and we feel the wind of the Holy Spirit blow fresh on our faces and powerfully through our hearts. We're tired. We're worn thin. Our spirits suffer. It is still dark. But it doesn't stay that way forever. You see, Mary goes to the tomb, the place of her pain, made sacred as a resting place for the body of Christ and the dreams of all who followed him. Only when she gets there, she sees the tomb is open. The rock that was rolled in front of the tomb has been moved away. Mary doesn't hesitate. She runs to tell Simon Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved that the tomb is open and empty and that they don't know where they've taken the body. The two, two disciples run to the tomb and they see and they believe. Now Mary isn't there yet. She's weeping outside of the tomb and it's not until she has her own encounter with the risen Christ that she understands and believes herself the miracle of the resurrection. Friends, our darkness will not go on forever. Those whom we have lost to this disease and to other things will not be restored to us, but we believe we will be with them as we are all wrapped up in God's eternal embrace. We will never get this year of our lives back like some kind of reverse daylight savings time change in the calendar, but we will get to move forward. We will move forward having spent some quality time with our quarantine partners, we will move forward having been forced to slow down and in many cases notice things in the world that we were too busy to see before. Nature has reclaimed some spaces and some air that were previously trampled and polluted. Many have new skills acquired during the lockdown and, and all of us know that we've made it. Almost. We're not quite there yet, but we can see the end from here. And just as the disciples on that great good morning experienced the miracle of the resurrection in different ways, so too we will all come out of this season of darkness in different ways, on different timetables and with different sensibilities. Some of us will rush right in and we're already past ready to start and be to have everything back up again. Some will stand outside and look in for a while and, and wait for a period before they're ready to resume some of our previous activities. And others will need their own personal experience before they, will, before they will feel safe and free, like Mary. But we are all witnesses to the light breaking through the darkness. That's the great good news of our Easter celebration, is that regardless of how dark the darkness was, the light broke through and began to shine in ways that will light our way into eternity. Our passing shadow is painful and real, but it is nothing compared to the light that we know from this Easter morning. The stone was rolled away and the light burst upon the scene as the disciples and eventually Mary realized, oh, he is risen. He is risen indeed. My sisters and brothers, we are children of this light. This resurrection, this light's victory over darkness in all of its forms and hues. We have a hope that is both of this world and eternally far beyond it. We have been swept up in God's story of victory over death, of light over darkness, of love over hatred and the pursuit of power. You are a child of the resurrection and no inky darkness nor despair can take that from you. You are a child of the light, the light that lights the entire world, and as such, you have been called the light of the world. So let us live boldly and bravely in the light of the resurrection, 
For indeed he has risen. He has risen. Alleluia and amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Go forth in triumph and in victory and in light. Alleluia.